Hello, everybody. Princess the Bear here, and we're back at uh, Sapphire Hall Resort for Amatista. Um, yes, so I, I think Amatista is quickly becoming our favorite restaurant on Universal property. Agreed. Uh, they have some amazing drinks, amazing food, and we're gonna go try some more stuff. We are slowly bringing you guys more Universal food reviews. Be patient with us, but it's coming. So uh, let's go arm ourselves with some food. Be sure to feel hot, hot, hot. You heard the girl. This is so pretty. I just love this place so much. And because we didn't want a booth, we got a beautiful view of the waterfall. And the boat. This resort is so pretty. I got the top of the palm, which is Pat Rhone. Um, Patron for new, new people out here. Um, Contrao, simple syrup, and then there's supposed to be a floater of Grand Marnier, but um, I don't see anything floating up here, so. Oh. Oh. It tastes like I just bit into a lime. Oh, wart. I like tart. Don't get me wrong, I love me some tart. That is a heart. I would give it um, two and a half out of five marks. This is not a mark. I like the simple elegance of this drink. It is almost one of those drinks that almost too pretty to drink. But there's never anything that's too pretty to drink. Yep. Ooh. That is definitely Pat Rowan. It's so smooth. It's so good going down. More than it has any right to. Mm, that's a solid drink. Four out of five claws for me. It's uh, not a whole lot to it, but it does what it does very well. I suggested to Bear to get this cookhouse punch because I thought it was a little bit up his alley. Um, it's got alcohol in it. I don't know what kind. The liquor of some sort with like pineapple and lemon and grenadine. And I don't know why because like he doesn't like lemon. So I don't know why I was like, oh, you should get this. But I, I did that. Oh, it tastes very tropical, very pineapple-y. I think he's gonna like this, but it is very sweet. Two out of five pineapples. You guys know, I don't, I don't like pineapple. This is not mine. This is for the pineapple enthusiast in you, which is not me. You heard it here first. If I don't like this drink, the princess 100% taught me into this. Uh, given its components, what I'm assuming is rum, pineapple, and uh, sort of like a punchy sort of look, I love fruit punch. The only thing that I love in this world more than fruit crunch is probably lemonade. And then pineapple's probably like a third. Oh yes. This is probably what I wanted my drinks when I first turned 21. I taste like when I would mix in like Hawaiian punch and like bottom shelf vodka. <laughs> Obviously no one near close to this. This is addictive. This could get me in trouble. This would plant me at the bar here at Amatista for probably three or four hours drinking these with good company. That right there is a five out of five flowers for me. Get the punch. It's on the bare necessities list. It's invited to the cookout. I am so excited for these vegan tacos because not only is there vegan mozzarella in this, they chorizo spiced beyond beef. So, talk about taking it up a level, as it leaks on me already. Oh, I'm so excited for this, you guys. Can you see all the cream? Look at that cream. It's not real cream.
like I was gonna have a gourmet del taco taco it would be this this is incredible this is a five out of five this is on my necessities list Mmm. 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 I don't care. I'll talk with my mouth full. I'll stuff all over my face. I'll make a mess all over the table. The best tacos ever. Oh my goodness, I love this place. I mean, you want to talk about the extra mile. You have the uh, cilantro on top, the pickled onions, a ton of vegan cheese, and like a nice hard shell taco. Even from just looking at it, I want to know, Universal, maybe just lo let Lowe's restaurant group run your restaurants in the park because they, this is not complicated, but they're doing it right. Mmm, I'll go with. We have eaten a lot of Beyond Beef dishes. And very rarely do I bite anything Beyond Beef, and I'm surprised. They put chorizo spice. They weren't kidding. It is legit like chorizo, juicy flavor, like the spices and the juice, and then the Beyond Meat, it doesn't taste like your typical Beyond Meat. And this is legit taco, and three of these is a meal for most people. This is an appetizer. I'm feeling like I've been giving out far too many like high ratings this time, but when it deserves it, it deserves it. That's a five out of five pause. If you're plant based and you're not getting this, you deserve all the Richter burgers in the world because you're never getting anything this good anywhere in the world's property. I said it. Mmm. It's uh, it's Orlando, okay, this is Florida. And I know that we have a lot of people from a lot of different parts of the country, a lot of different parts of the world. We have a, a frost warning here tonight. It's supposed to drop to like 38 degrees. Six, for two. Mid 30s. For a Floridian, that's cold. For anybody in Florida, period, that's freezing. Um, you have chicken soup here. And not only is chicken soup, it's the same chicken they get in the rotisseries that if you look at our last video which is in the comments somewhere uh i absolutely love their chicken some of the best theme park chicken i think i've ever had known as soup on a cold day with some corn and some noodles i feel like i'm in for something special big chunks of chicken it's not cube chicken it's actually like shaved rotisserie chicken Mm. You can taste that mojo flavor. I mean, the broth is well seasoned without being like overly salty, like a, you'd expect from like a canned or pre made soup. This is hearty. Like, honestly, this is one of those restaurants where you can come get, get a couple apps and go to the bar. It can be perfectly fine. If you don't want a heavy dinner, this is a good soup. It's not perfect. We use a little bit more of like the mojo seasoning like in the broth. But other than that, I think it's very solid. Four out of five plus. I'd come back for this. I think we were hungry. Here we have the beautiful barbecue vegan jackfruit. Sorry, sorry. Vegan barbecue pork is actually what it's called. So it's got jackfruit throughout, and then you have a vegan mozzarella, artichoke, arugula, pickled onion, and a sofrito sauce. So I'm excited for this. I'm gonna grab this slicey here. Give you a little pull. I guess I don't even need the plate. I'm just gonna. Um, hmm. 
That is an interesting medley of flavors. The sofrito was interesting, but I think it would have done well with like an additional drizzle of barbecue sauce. Just to give it like an overall, like a little more barbecue flavor. I quite like this. Um, probably one of my favorite dishes I'm gonna say from here. I definitely like this better than the curry. So I'm gonna give this a four and a half out of five flatbreads. I don't really think there's many places where you can get a beautiful flatbread with this many ingredients on a theme park property outside of like Blaze and stuff, which we haven't been to Blaze in a while. So comment on this video and tell us if you want us to go back to Blaze. We will reluctantly go. Four and a half out of five pizzas. On paper, this pizza sounds great. Jackfruit, barbecued, flatbread, artichoke. But I worry about some conflicting flavors with everything that's on here. Hmm. Hmm. The sofrito and the jackfruit are great. Not heavily seasoned, but the flavor comes through. I get what you're getting at with like a, it's more of like a, a vegan island barbecue than like a barbecue. They could really use some more barbecue punch with the artichoke and the pickled onion. Sort of like fighting the rest of the flavor, so it comes through a lot more like tart and tangy than I'm expecting. I do think it needs more barbecue if you're gonna call it barbecue, but. I like the creativity and the addition of flavors. Like, I would never have thought to put jackfruit, artichoke, and pickled onion all in the same pizza, but it actually works quite well. Now, as a pizza, it's great. Barbecue, I don't know so much, but I still think this is one of the most inventive vegan pizzas that I've seen in quite some time. For that, it's gonna get a solid four out of five claws. I wish half the restaurants at Parks went to or restaurants went to were this inventive. Mmm. Mmm. Keeping the presentation a little bored. Killing it over here, Amatista. Killing it. A reorder from the last time that we were here, these yucca, because they're just so flavorful and delicious, I had to get more. Mm. Seasoned, smoked. Delicious. Three and a half out of five yuccas. I like yucca more than fries, I feel. They're so good. Amatista is one of those places with a plant-based person. If you leave hungry, you clearly did something wrong because they gave you every option possible. And this yucca is one of them. Uh, we ourselves at home have not really played with yucca that much. There are only many places we can get it, but we're always amazed at how good and flavorful it can be. We got some like peppers and onions in here with nice thick pieces of yucca. Mm. The way this restaurant achieves authentic flavoring while still letting it be plant-based. Such a place in my heart. I appreciate places that we come that the princess can get good food. Not just food, but good food. That's the whole premise of this channel. Is a go to a place where we both can have food that we enjoy. And this definitely raises the bar. Three and a half out of five plus. Now, we have gotten paella at a lot of places. So we've gotten it at Columbia in Tampa. We've gotten it from Haleo. Haleo at Disney Springs. And it's been a mixed bag. Uh, we've even cooked by it at home, which has been an awesome experience for us. Uh, but this has got to be one of the most beautiful presentations of paella I have ever seen. A nice seafood paella with mussels, shrimp, there's some chorizo in here. Some of that same Mojo chicken this place is known for. 
calamari is in here. Like, it's a definite seafood paella, but just the way this is played, I'm almost, I don't want to eat it. It's so pretty. But I'm going to eat it because I'm a bear and I eat things. I don't know anything, but I eat a lot of things. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to scrape some of this muscle out here. We're going to get a little bit of this uh, calamari here. I don't see the chicken. We're going to have a nice helping of all of that on a fork. And let's see what this is all about. Mmm. Um, that's what I expect the paella to be. You get that unique sofrito base. With the rice is cooked perfection. It's not chewy. It's not al dente. It's not overly soft and mushy. And then everything retains this unique flavor. The peas, the, the peppers, the, the calamari, and the mussels. All to make like this dish that's just an amalgamation of flavors in your mouth. Which is what paella is supposed to be. This makes me happy. This is a soft pan dish. I need another bite now. Before I give it a rating, I need another bite. Let's see the shrimp. And the chicken here. I found a piece of chicken. Ooh, oh, and there's some of the chorizo. Right down there. Look at that. Look at that fork. You'll find no better pairing. The trees even has a little bit of char to it. It's a four and a half and a five plus. It's almost perfect. I love the display. I love the presentation. I think I like the vegan tacos better, but this is still a solid dish. One that I would recommend you guys come here and get. If you've never had paella, and you've been hesitant to go to a little place that's like full Spanish food like Jaleo, come on, Batista. Get it here. Tell Princess and the Bear sent you. Come get this. It's a whole little squiddy. It's like a little mini Hank. Little tendrils and little suckies on him. Oh. Ew, gross. It's no chart octopus, but it's pretty good. Not your mother's apple teeny, which I feel like is a play on not your father's line. It's like an apple mule that I'm not mad at it and it's not too strong on the apple the ginger like helps cut through it I like this this is a four and a half out of five apples I think this is something that should be served at storybook dining I'll admit I'm not a, I'm not a teeny person martinis and all sorts of other teenies have never really been my jam I'll try them and we've enjoyed some nice ones and gotten some at Rick's sprinkles and chocolate and I just don't teeny isn't my first go-to but this, this this is pretty inviting this is like, like somebody would show me a nice time adds a lot of ginger beer oh my lord if you told me that was poison I would almost believe you but I would still drink it Whew. Wow, three out of five claws. Um, you know how like you have so much of one flavor, you're not sure if you're the same person afterwards. That's that. that that's a whole lot of ginger. My people would think that would cure all it ails you. Mm -hmm. Amatisa continues to be one of the best restaurants at Universal, and that bar is really high. I'm gonna say it. It's my favorite restaurant on Universal property. Their food goes above and beyond, their service goes above and beyond, and their drinks are above and beyond. Agreed, agreed, agreed. I would love for somebody in our community to try to prove me wrong in the comments. If there's some place you think would be better than Amatista, prove it. Oh, wait. Tell me. Do you mean that world's best theme park restaurant at if, Islands if, of Adventure? If you say Mythos, we're going to have an issue, you and me. But. If there's anywhere else you think we'll do better than this, by all means, let us know. If there's anywhere else you want us to go, of course, the comments can place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday.
Saturday. We'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the bell. And like this video. And if you don't comment, Bear will put the Cruciatus curse on you. Or just sing an Isaac band. But you heard the bell.